That's not good. That's not right. It's not supposed to happen. It's a horrible sound. Oh man. Hi, I'm Tim with DIY Machining. Thanks for watching. What we have here is what I what I can tell is a fairly common problem with the CNC Fusion Z-axis installation on these mini mills. What's happening is something in the Z-axis is binding, making that horrible noise and the stepping motor is having a hard time moving the the head of the mill in either the positive or negative Z direction. So I've seen a lot of videos that show how to install the CNC Fusion kit. I didn't see you need to do that video again, but I haven't seen a lot of videos that talk about how to solve this problem. So let's dig in. Hopefully this is useful to someone as we try to solve this problem. First thing I'm going to do is loosen up this upper block here. Uh, put it all together kind of loosely and had it running up and down and didn't have any problems. But then when I tightened everything down, it must have been just enough to pull something out of alignment and cause it to bind here, probably here in the, the ball nut. I don't think there's anything wrong with the, the mill itself. I suspect there's something with this ball screw and this ball nut down here. So let's see if we can get that solved. I went the route of drilling through holes up here. I didn't, didn't really want to tap. I threaded a hole into this cast column here. Let's get these loosened up a little bit. Let's see if we can just start by loosening up a little bit. Now, in all fairness, I have an older version of the CNC Fusion kit. I have, I don't know what generation you'd call it, but I noticed that the newer versions have four mounting holes back in this area. Uh, mine only has three. It still uses the center hole that was there with, the, I think it was a bump stop for the original mill. So let's try that. I've got that loosened up. Let's see if it'll move a little better now. I'm getting close. I've still got the, the spring assist on that side, so I don't want to go down too far, otherwise it'll jam and bottom out that spring. So the lifting spring should be helping it a little bit. Let's see if I can carefully here lift up. So what's interesting is it still f spins fairly freely by hand. I mean, it, I can spin this and the stepper motor and raise the entire head of the mill. And what's also interesting is I'm still pressing, commanding the same direction. And see it's moving down. I'm, I'm commanding the same movement, the same uh, direction. I haven't changed which direction I'm commanding. I did turn the current limit all the way up on my the Gerbil, or G shield here, Gerbil shield. So I've got a I don't have a fan on it right now, so I kind of have to be paying attention to it. I don't want to burn it out, heat it up too much, and smoke it. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to dig into this a little bit more. I can't figure this out right now. So, I'll spend some time working on this, and when I get it figured out, I'll let you know. Okay, quickly, I've pulled the Z stepper motor out of the, the Z mounting block up here and I'm just running it here on the bench and it runs fine in both directions so I can see it 
moving in both directions down here. Forward and backwards. So I'm pretty confident it has nothing to do with the electronics. I suspect, still suspect it's something here in the, the mechanicals of the Z-axis. So I know some people have shimmed this upper block here to align it better with the ball screw and the ball nut here. So I may try that. Um, but I'm still kind of surprised that when I had it all freed up that it still didn't move as I expected. Maybe my stepper motor is just too small. And it is a 425 ounce inch motor. Uh, just taking a guess. I'm assuming that's enough. Um, or it could be that there's something, you know, maybe this ball screw is bent slightly. I did buy this entire kit used. <clears throat> Try taking off the support spring or the spring assist here and see if that makes any difference at all. <clears throat> makes it better or worse. I'd expect it to make it worse, but I never know. I've got a pretty good hold of this this arm here. It's on a torsion spring, and I don't want to let it go flying out of my hand and hit me or something in the shop here. really not under that much tension. I wonder if it's supposed to... Yeah. I was thinking maybe it was supposed to go another turn because I did take it off when I was doing the setup up here. <coughs> right, let's reinstall this upper stepper motor here. snugged up. Alright. There we go. That seems pretty good. Now I'm going to gently, or gradually, not gently, <laughs> gradually tighten up all these fasteners here and see if that causes the the issue, or if it was maybe that spring assist on the other side. I try to tighten them all equal amounts. Just start with getting it snug. Sounds really good right there. Okay, I'm going to keep going, tightening things up. Alright, that's getting pretty snug. Um, 
one is kind of loose. We'll go a little bit more and try it again. Well, it looks really good. I'm going to run it down pretty close here to the bottom. I'm going to try to run it through the entire travel motion. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to snug up these last fasteners and give it one more final test. Get these upper bolts and nuts secure as tight as I can get them. I've got lock washers on the back, that's why I'm not having to put a wrench on them. I can feel them that they're not spinning. I might need to go. I mean, there's basically zero clearance now between the the table and the, the bottom of the spindle here. Hmm. Well, it looks like it was this spring assist here on this side that was causing the problems. I thought for sure that would do nothing but help. So, interesting. I'll just leave it disconnected. Works for me. I should note that when I assembled the Z-axis, let me get this spun around here so you can see it, I did take a lot of time messing with this mounting block and getting it positioned so that this upper block wasn't tipped away or too close to the column of the mill. I noticed when I first installed it and just tightened everything down, it was leaning, you know, this upper block was way out here and I had to kind of pull it back to to get this faster and as I tightened it up and I was like yeah that's that's not gonna work I was pretty sure I was gonna get a bind down here so what I ended up doing is you know, I raised this whole the whole head of the mill up so that I could get my fingers in there because there's a bolt that runs from inside the head into this block that's a blind tapped hole from the back side so I took that bolt out and I loosened these and then lowered everything down again and set this up against the column where I thought it should be with this free to rotate just a little bit. And then I marked some pencil lines here, here, and here so that I could then reference everything as I tightened the bolts and as I put that bolt on the inside back in, tightened it down. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to pull this block out of alignment of where I had it set. Because on the inside of this mill, it's a casting, and so there's a, a fillet and when you the bolt actually rests on part of that fillet so it can do some funny things so i ended up tightening these two socket head cap screws tightened those up to help hold this and made sure that this block still sat nicely against the column took this bolt upper bolt back out raised everything up and tightened down that upper bolt slowly watching my pencil lines and so that's how i ended up assembling the z-axis hopefully that helps uh, if you enjoyed the video, appreciate the thumbs up, the subscribes. You know, if you want to see more videos, that's the best way to do it. Thanks again, and take care.